Hello, and welcome to Marriage Unchained, the art of one flesh, where saving marriages, saving families, and saving souls is the flavor of the day. Now, let's join our host and author of Marriage Unchained, Catholic Alpha Radical, Jerry Jacobs Jr. Welcome to episode 20. Today's focus, how to be a holy lover in your Catholic marriage. So sit back, relax, take a chill pill, and get ready to rock. But don't duck. Can you feel it? Catholic Alpha Radical coming at you now. Hello and welcome to Catholic Alpha Radical, a Catholic relationship podcast giving you winning tactics for marriage problems, girlfriend problems, and intimacy problems for men. Moreover, where my main mission is to keep you out of divorce court and where marriage unchained, the art of one flesh, divorce combat coaching is the flavor of the day while also helping men understand marriage and courting, not dating in the Catholic faith. Why? Because dating is for sex and courting is for marriage. This is episode 20. Bam! So let's do this. Quote of the day, quote, there is a closer correlation between mental instability and the animal view of sex than many suspect. Happiness consists in interiority of the spirit, namely the development of personality in relationship to a heavenly destiny. He who has no purpose in life is unhappy. He who exteriorizes his life and is dominated or subjugated by what is outside himself or spends his energy on the external without understanding its mystery is unhappy to the point of melancholy. End quote. Venerable Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen, three, to get married. Please remember to share this podcast with someone needing help in their marriage or relationship. Rate this podcast if listening on iTunes. Subscribe to this podcast if listening on CatholicAlpha.com to get new episodes in your email today. So our first segment today is the cowardice of men, the top 21 reasons men cause the 2018 scandal in the Catholic Church and why we're not going to take it anymore. Now, I know it's been a while, 2018, it was 2018, the end of 2018, and now it's 2020 and the stuff is still going on, ain't nothing changed. So that's why I decided to continue the um continue this uh this series because it's perpetual nothing's changed the bishops are still the change still the same um we have sexual scandals all over the place um right now now the um all the bishops except a couple of two couple of in the country have shut are shutting down masses the masses are open back up but you can only have half in there everybody's so darn scared no one has any faith no one has any faith, including the bishops and the priests. No one has any faith. And you really can't blame all the priests because they're just doing what the bishops tell them to do because, you know, the bishops, they, they shut them down. But the main thing is, man, the same kind of stuff that was going on at the end of 2018 uh, is still going on. And the men are responsible, just like always. And I, I, I'm, just, I'm just sick of it. And you should be sick of it, too. Um, so before I start, this will be a 21 episode series, one per show. 
also understand that the infiltration of the Catholic Church with homosexuality and radical feminism, plus the watering down of the faith and the stripping away of the Latin mass was planned in order to destroy the morality of those within the church, priests, and laity, and is not the teaching of Christ Church, the Catholic Church. Why was this done? For three reasons. And I'm trying to tell you this because the church was shut down. This church has been it was infiltrated by communists, and people don't really understand what communists are. Basically, is this thing was they gonna control everything you do, just like China. Just research China, and you understand. World domination is the end goal. They're just as patient as the Masons. They don't care. Okay, we were all pawns, so they couldn't take over the country. They couldn't. They couldn't infiltrate America. They couldn't take over the country. So what they did was infiltrate these things into our society. And if you listen to what I'm getting ready to say, you're going to see that right now these things are totally gone. Especially now that whoever thought of this brilliant idea of the coronavirus, it was brilliant. If you're trying to take over a country, you scare everybody to stay in their houses and you control them to do whatever you want them to do slowly over time. OK, so the first thing that they tried to do, the communists, was to destroy the American family. That's the first thing they implemented. Right. Destroy the American family. They've done a great job of that. Right. Contraception, same sex marriage, no fault, divorce, abortion. OK, the American family is completely, almost completely destroyed. It's devastated. OK, the second thing the communists did to destroy our country is our morality. Well, guess how they did that? They infiltrated the Catholic Church through the priesthood, from the sit through the seminaries to the priesthood. Okay, and that's why you have a lot of homosexual scandals today. Same sex, um, same sex priests inside the church. You have priests that agree with the with the way the church is supposed to, um, uh, the you, that agree with homosexuality in the church. You actually have priests promoting homosexuality, which what destroys the family. OK, it destroys the morality. If you're a homosexual and that is a um, and that is a disorder, then what happens is when people come to you for confession up in the boot, up in the um, up in the uh, um, up in the pulpit, you don't teach morality. You just don't like right now. How how do I know this is true? Well, for one thing, there are all kinds of stories inside seminaries where men are attacked and raped. OK. This has been happening for since the 1920s and 30s. OK. Um, also, look at the morality. None of the priests or the bishops, unless they very rare, unless they are a very rare breed, preach on morality, which is what the Ten Commandments, which is what the natural law, which is what death, judgment, heaven, hell, abortion, homosexuality, um, murder, death, suffering, sacrifice. They don't, hell, they don't teach on none of that stuff. None of it. You know what they talk about? Mercy, 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 mercy. Mercy, 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 mercy. Mercy, 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 mercy. You know, God is going to love you. Basically, he's there telling us that God's going to do whatever, that God is going to do whatever, um, that, that God's going to let us do whatever we want to do, and he's going to forgive us. Okay, if you believe that, dude, I got some uh, land over here across the street that I can sell you. All right? Uh, the third thing that the communists infiltrated, um, put into place to destroy America was what? Our patriotism. OK, now, how did they do that? They did that by disinformation. Like right now, every time a president's elected right here, this is the this is the one of the things that lets you know that our patriotism is crap. OK, first of all, started, you know, kind of back in uh, the Vietnam War. Those men came back. They were, you know, they were battered. They were bruised. Um, they had shot up, they were injured, and they got, you know, they didn't have no parades for them. They, they dogged them out. They talked bad about them, called them murderers, baby murderers, and uh, uh, baby killers. Okay, no one in this country has the right to call anybody a baby killer. We didn't kill millions of millions of babies, millions of years. Hundreds of thousands of babies a year in this country are murdered in the womb. OK, which goes against the thing that the safest place for a baby is inside his mama. Well, not these days. OK, so that's how our patriotism is gone. Another thing that I will say is that, you know, the patriotism is gone every time a president is elected. Now, every time, every time a president is elected. Right. No matter if it's Obama, uh, Trump, 
whatever. It doesn't matter who it was. He is completely berated. He is completely disrespected. He is completely, you know, challenged and made fun of. And uh, don't even think, you know, they everybody calls him Trump. Nobody calls him Mr. President. Everybody calls him Obama. They didn't call him Mr. President. I mean, it was, it is so ridiculous. The president, it was, used to be when a president was elected, what would happen is, look, okay, if, if, the, if the president was Democrat, let's say it was Jimmy Carter, right? Okay. People will go, okay, you know, okay, I'm a, I'm a Republican. We got our butts kicked. You know, life is life. We'll get them next time. And what do we do? We come together as a nation behind our president, and we would try to make things better and work with them. Today, man, I'm not saying it was perfect back then, but what I'm saying is today is completely worse. It's all about agenda, control, and selfishness. And that's what this coronavirus thing is about. It's about, they want to, they try, listen, if you don't understand what I'm saying, what I'm getting ready to say, then you need to you, you have a problem. Okay? The coronavirus is 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 a is a tool. I'm not saying people aren't getting sick and dying, but what I am saying is there's a lot of false statistics. There's a lot of false people they're saying people die and they ain't die. They had heart disease or lung disease or they had cancer already. And what they do is say they died of, of coronavirus. But anyway, all that doesn't matter. What matters is they're using the coronavirus to slowly but surely condition us into being obedient to the government, to the one world, to one, the one world government, the new world order. OK, that is what this is really about. Americans, if they would have just said, look, everybody stay in the house, don't come out. We would have revolted. But see, they did it slowly. They're doing things slowly. OK, you got to understand what's really going on. And what's really going on is control. So those are the three things that that have that the communists have put into play to destroy the country. And I'm going to tell you this. The country is basically done. There's not going to be a cure. And if it is a cure, it'll be a vaccine that you have to take to prevent the coronavirus. It won't be. I get sick with the coronavirus. You give me a shot and I get cured. No, they want to put, they want to inject you with poison. Okay. To do whatever they want you to do. It's all about control and everybody running here, wearing these masks. You wearing a mask for what? The virus can get through the mask. It doesn't matter if it was, if this was so devastating and so, um, if this was all so devastating, it would be we all have on hazmat or we would have on everybody have on gloves walking around. We have on hazmat suits walking around. We'd have on all this different stuff. People be falling all over. No one would come out. Of, you have to say you wouldn't have to say don't come out your house because everyone well, nobody come out of their house. Listen, this is all about control. I'm not saying everybody in the government is, is, is taken by this, but they don't. It's my time. People don't even know they being manipulated. This is all about we are going to can take over this country. We're going to control it and we're going to we're going to condition you, the idiot, to keep doing whatever we say do. And then finally, we're going to look up and we're going to be like the Jews up in the concentration camps getting gassed because the communists took over, which means what? Communism is a thing of a world domination. We give you you do what we say. We control everything you do. We control all the money. All the religion, we control everything. And you people that are sitting around thinking that this can't happen, you're going to see it. You're going to see. And what you got to understand, the Jews, the Jews, this is, this is why people respect the Jews. This is why I respect the Jews. No matter what you think about them, they survived. But here's the deal. They, they, if you talk to anybody that understands history and is honest about you, they'll tell you we're going through the same thing. Here's the the Jews. What, what did they do with the Jews at first? First they did was you can't do this, okay? You can't do a certain thing. Then then they start. Then they start what? Then they put them in the ghettos. Oh, don't worry, we're just putting you here to protect you, okay? We put you in the ghettos, and they call you know they put you in the ghettos to protect you. Then before you know it, they coming in and raiding your house, taking your belongings. Well, you a Jew, you don't belong, you don't deserve to have this kind of stuff. Then before you know it, you getting uh, they're splitting your family up, taking your wife over here, your kids over here, taking the old folks over here and the young folks over there. 
Then before you know it, you own a bus or a car or a train going somewhere. Before you know it, you arrive, you're in the camp. Then you're in the camp. Now it's like you're in a prison. But they keep telling you everything's going to be all right. Everything's going to be all right. We care. We try to protect you. You know, we don't want anything bad to happen to you. All the families just broke up. Then before you know it, they starving. They starving them. They give them malnutrition in the Jews and stuff. They're not getting any food. They're not giving them. They're not giving them clean clothes. They're not doing anything stuff. They're just horrible to them. Then what are they doing? Then before you know it, they just shoot them. They start just shooting them. They start just shooting them for no reason. Then what happens? Now they put them in gas chambers. Okay, they put them in gas and gassing them. And then what they do? Take the bodies and dig holes and put them in mass graves. I'm telling you, man, this is this that is that's communism. You think you people liberals, especially liberals, people think that that this is all gonna work out, it's all gonna be all right, man. But listen, God has pulled his grace from this country. 50 or 100 or 200 years ago, this would have never happened in America. But think about what's going on, man. Stuff the devil works slowly. Even God works slowly. They work on the supernatural timeline. <laughs> the supernatural timeline, baby. And the supernatural timeline is we implement things slow to give you a chance to get together. That's what God does. He implements things slow to give you a chance to get things together. The devil, he implements things slow so that you don't see it coming. If you don't see it coming, you don't hit it off. So that's that's what's going on, man. That's the, that's that's my little rant today on my rant number one because you like do a rant, but this is my rant number one because I just want people to understand, man. If you don't believe anything I'm saying, just think about what I said and try to look around. You'll see, man. You'll see. God has put His grace on America. He's tired of us killing babies. He's tired of us um, same sex marriages. He's tired of everybody getting a divorce. He's tired of, of the abuse. He's tired of the murdering and the killing and the thieving. You know, he's tired of the natural law being broken. He's tired of the Ten Commandments being broken. It hurts him. It kills him. It hurts him. It's a pain. He is our father. And this is what we putting him through. Used to be America wasn't like that. But look at it now, man. If you just open your eyes and stop getting off the cell phones and off Facebook and stuff, you will see that what I'm saying is true, man. You will. This country is on its way out. Homosexuality, same-sex marriage was the last thing. It was the last thing, I think. It was it. Now, Trump got elected because Hillary was going to get elected. Hillary was going to get elected. It would, would, it'd be worse right now. If Hillary Clinton got, would have got elected four years ago, it'd be 10 times worse right now. Donald Trump was a blessing from God to slow things down, to try to get us to do what? Get it together. So that is communism. I just gave you a, a small, small view of what it's going to be like and what it could be like. I'm just saying we need to be praying. Everybody needs to be praying. I don't care if you're Jews, if you're Jewish, if you're black, if you're white, Korean. I don't care. Japanese, Mexican. It doesn't matter. You need to be praying that God gives us mercy. See, that's what mercy is. God has given us mercy. You want God to give us mercy so that we can get this back together because we can't get together without him now. It's too late. It's too overboard. It's too it's, it's too far gone. Okay? Anyway, um, that's it. Communism. They, destroyed them. They, they couldn't infiltrate America the other way. So what they do? They infiltrated these three. They, inf they implemented these three things. They destroyed the American family, which is done. They destroyed our morality, which is done. And they destroying our patriotism, which is most of the way done. And if you want more on this, please refer back to episode two. Bam. So let's get started with the number 20 with number 20 of the top 21 reasons that men are responsible for the 2018 scandal in the Catholic Church and shutting down our masses and all kind of other things that, are, that have gone on in these last year and a half. OK, realize these top 21 reasons are in no certain order as they all feed upon one another. But first, let's review the first 19. The number one reason was men refuse to accept our role as men. Number two, 
We allowed the men in the Catholic Church, popes, cardinals, bishops, priests, deacons to water down, dilute the teachings of the Catholic faith. No more teaching on the four last things, death, judgment, heaven, and hell. Number three was they didn't fight for Christ during Vatican II. Number four, an unwillingness to sacrifice for Christ. Number five, they have nothing they are willing to die for. Number six, men have begun raising soft and selfish boys, a.k.a. wusses. Number seven, men don't understand our mission and purpose as men to protect, defend, and serve God, marriage, wife, children, society. Number eight, we didn't crush feminism. Number nine, we didn't crush the Protestant revolt. Number 10, we didn't crush contraception, a.k.a. birth control. Number 11, we didn't crush abortion. Number 12, we didn't crush so-called same-sex marriage. Number 13, we didn't crush no-fault divorce. Number 14, we didn't crush ecumenism. Number 15, men have stopped praying. Number 16, men have stopped passing on the Catholic faith to their children. Number 17, men have stopped being obedient to God, which means they want to be their own God. Number 18, men have abandoned God for the theory of evolution. Number 19, unchastity, men can't control their sexual power. So what is the number 20 reason men have caused the 2018 scandal in the Catholic Church, which has now even spread into 2019 and midway through 2020? The abandonment of marriage. The abandonment of marriage. See, it's easier to have sex with a woman than to marry her. It's easier to live with a woman than to marry her. It's easier to drive a woman's car than to marry her. It's easier to spend a woman's money than to marry her. It's easier to say, I love you and keep her on a puppet string than it is to what? To marry her. It's easier to remain a coward and waste years of her time using up her body, youth, her vitality, damaging her soul than it is to marry her. See, man, this this way, when we are done with her and have taken advantage of every single pleasure and benefit she has to offer, we can dump her, move out, take her belongings, leave her with the children and rent and move on to the next sucker. And this is what we do as men. We're lying to ourselves and rationalizing that it's her fault. It ain't her fault. It's our fault. Sure, it's her fault that she gave you. She gave herself to you. But man, we all know how women are. If they like you and you say the right things, then you can sleep with them if they if they believe in that kind of thing. But it's not her job to remain in control. It's your job to remain in control. Remain in control. See, and um. We what we do is we rationalize, we lie to ourselves that it's her fault. And this keeps the shame away and helps us sleep at night. I must ask you, what has happened? Why do we men do this over and over and over and over again with the same crappy results? Most of we, we just are blind. You sleep with a woman. Then you get tired of her. Then you leave her. Then you go find another woman. You you uh you uh woo her. Then you sleep with her. Then you you leave her. You get tired of her, and then you leave her. Then you do you find another woman, another sucker to do what you do your bidding, and then you don't control yourself any more. You sleep with her, mess her soul up, screw her up, her mind up, and you leave her too. My thing is. We all know what it's about. It's about the sex thing. But man, I'm telling you, God is like, I'm done with all that, dude. I'm done with all that. That's why you that's why as men we're miserable. We can't be happy. Because we keep damaging the souls of women. And like I said, don't get me wrong, women, they want, you know, they have needs too. So they they become like Eve and they want to go out and have sex and have with so-called fun and stuff. But they know, too, that it's stupid. But 
what women won't what they won't but women won't change. They won't change to try to get a man. Most women they can't even cook, can't boil an egg. If you can cook and you feed a man, dude, you put a spell on him. If you can cook, a man will he'll almost marry you for that. But no, you know the feminism thing. We got to toe the line. You know, I'm a woman. I got to toe the line. You know, I got to tell him I don't need a man. He can kiss my butt and I got to go out and work eight, 12 hours a day and make all this money and do this and do that. You know, but it's, it's, it doesn't make sense, man. You know, this is what's happened. This is why we got the coronavirus out here and we're puppets out here because we have been conditioned over the past 60, 70, 100 years to this point what we are today. I'm telling you, 50 years ago, if you'd have told America to stay in your house and don't come out, they'd have been like, man, you're crazy. I ain't staying in my house. Over the flu is basically what we're talking about. It even killed more people than the flu. Oh, they probably didn't doctor the numbers up. But, but man, if people were really, really scared, I see people running around with these mad with, the, with, with this mask on, right? On their ear, below their nose, you know, in their hand. You know, because everybody knows deep down that this is not a threat like a pandemic like everybody's talking about. They just don't know why the government is doing this. That's what most and that's why you gotta be sympathetic to a lot of to most people. They understand instinctively that this is not a true like back in the day. When when was it back in um in uh olden times, you know, the death plague or something, the, the the plague, the plague of death, I forgot what they called it, but a real plague, man. A real plague, man. You don't have to beg people to stay in the house and make them stay in the house. Like now in Indiana, they get ready to fine people a thousand dollars if they go outside without a mask on. I mean, step outside their door. See, man, the control and the power hungry mongrels can't help it. They do not want to release the power. They right now they got you doing. They got you doing their bidding. Whatever they say, do you do? Cause you're scared. We're scared. Everybody's scared. Everybody's fearful that the kid gonna get sick, that their mom's gonna get sick, that they gonna get sick. But man, when the flu is out, they ain't gotta care for the flu either. And thousands and thousands and thousands of people die of the flu every year. They ain't got a clue for that. But what do you do? Me and my wife were talking about the other day. What do you do? During the summertime, you don't worry about the flu and cold. But when the wintertime and the fall comes, what do you do? Every time you shake somebody's hand, you wash your hand. You, you think more about not touching your face. You think more about, you know, all, a different about, you know, um, of taking medicine and stuff to, to not get colds and prevent colds and stuff. But see, that's what that's what you do. This right here, man. People, most of the people that died for this right now are the people that are already sick about something. They're already sick or they're old or something or extremely old. But even then, you have to be sick already with something. But they don't tell you that stuff, man. And it's not fair. It's not fair to be truthful with us, man. And that's what I'm, I'm, I'm I had a lot of people upset about. That you're not being completely truthful with us. Because something's going on. And it ain't no darn coronavirus disease. Now, I'm not, again, I'm, saying, I'm not saying that people aren't dying. That we shouldn't be, um, that we shouldn't um, be unsympathetic. I'm not saying that because I know that people are dying, man. I'm just saying, man, it's not like they're saying, man. It's not. If you just look around, you see everybody instinctively knows it too. Because if everybody thought there was a real pandemic, man, people would be. I was in the military, dude. We had if there was a a a, a airborne virus or something, we'd be wearing. We go. We be wearing a mask, like a gas mask. We be wearing. We be having on rubber suits. We be walk. That's what we be doing. We would be walking around with a little medical mask on or some no. We mean people ain't even wearing gloves, man. That's how. That's how I know people deep down really don't believe this crap. I really believe they don't believe it. They just want to go along to get along. They want to cause no waves. I understand that, man. You know, we, we can't have it. Plus, we've been trying to be sheep for 100 years now. You just go along because you don't want to cause no problems. Anyway, moving on. I went on to another rant. Rant number three. I'm sorry. Number th- <laughs> Sorry, man. I ain't been over the wild, man. And, and God's calling me to come back, man. And I just, you know, it's a lot of things that's been going on and, and we ain't talked about. And I just... 
you know, I was I was gonna, you know, let Catholic Alpha go a little bit more and but man, people you know, I was on a couple of podcasts and people asking me to come back and my wife is on me, you know, and and you know, I I just my thing is, man, we gotta be passionate about men about us and what we're doing, man. You know, we we gotta get our manhood back, dude. Stand up, man, and look and just open your eyes, get informed. Get off these these this off this fear mongering, man. Stop watching this stuff every single day. I haven't watched the news in thirty years, dude. I have not watched the news in thirty years. You know why? Because I got tired of getting manipulated in my twenties. Every time I turn the TV on, it's about some crappy, some bad, some you know, some people dying, and uh, you know, some kind of scheme or something. You know, them people just want to sell papers, man. That's the deal. They're really not trying to inform you. We all know the, the, the mainstream media is bought. They bought and paid for. They were, they were put here by the Constitution to help control, to, to help um, protect us, to keep a watch eye on the government. Well, what they didn't done? They just, they puppets now. They bought and paid for. Anyway, anyway, man, you know, my question was, why do we men, why do men continually, continually um do this you know uh why why is one woman not enough why is 10 women not enough why is 20 or more women not enough why and the reason is i'm gonna go back to the morality thing because look man without morality without god without the without the the, the natural law man you have no no mission no plan you ha- you don't even know where to look to turn to see if what you're hearing through your senses is the truth so the reason is the clergy in the Catholic Church have ceased preaching the word of God again. As I always say, the Catholic Church is the one and only true moral authority left in the world. This just That's the truth. That's why the communists went after the church, dude. That's why they don't ever, you don't never see the government or you are, I would see the liberals or the people that don't love God or believe in God, the atheists and all this, those kind of organizations. You never see them go after Billy Bob's house of God on the corner of 21st and Capitol. You never see them go after them. Never. You know, you never see them go after those people. They all, they, they never, they don't go after the Methodists. They don't go after the Baptist, Baptists. They don't go after the Jehovah's Witnesses. You know why? Because they know they already got them. They broke away from God's true church, which is the Catholic church. So the devil knows he has them. That's why they don't go after them. Because most of those denominations, they change the way they think every other day. They change the way they think every other day. Today they believe in divorce. Tomorrow they don't believe in divorce. The next day they believe in abortion. Or the next day they believe in they believe in the choice. The other day they don't believe in choice of abortion. You know, people just don't understand. They don't get it. They attack the Catholic Church because the Catholic Church, if you look at our dogma, discipline, and doctrine, has not changed and will not change because God does not change. Okay? And if the clergy refuse to teach the true teachings of Christ, then other Protestant churches and lady in the Catholic Church find and rationalize their own morality. That's what happens. Our priests and our bishops, cardinals, and pope, they don't teach nothing. So what does everybody do? We're lost. Everybody's lost in the church. The Protestant churches, the Catholic church, we're all lost. We're trying to find our way. And when we when, when people don't preach the word of God, the true word of the Bible, man, and the Catholic church, the traditions of the Protestant, I mean, of um of the uh, uh, apostles and, and Christ and all that stuff, man, when they don't do that, man, people start looking for other, other meaning to what's going on. And they abandon God because they don't know God. Look, marriage is the core of the universe, right? God created it because we need families and children need parents living together under one roof. As a matter of fact, they have that right. They have that right. So with no true teaching or guidance, men flounder and moving from woman to woman trying to fill the emptiness. And believe it or not, all men have an emptiness in our gut. And that's what I mean trying to find what's going on how to feel that emptiness right now we fill it with food we fill it with money we fill it with sex we fill it with um the cell phones and pleasure but that only that's all temporary it's only temporary and so what has to happen is people have to understand man especially men that you will never feel that emptiness in your life and in your gut without god 
because God is infinite. He created you and only he can fulfill it. Now, I know a lot of people don't understand what I'm talking about. You know why you understand what I'm talking about? Because you don't care. You like being in misery. You don't want to grow. You don't want to find, you don't want to know the real meaning of life. You want to keep on living out your little hundred years. And then when that's over, you rationalize, well, I'm going to go to hell anyway, or I'm just going to float around in the, uh, up in the supernatural world, just float around and whatever. I'm not, I'm going to go into this emptiness void or some stuff that people come up with some old crap to make themselves feel better about dying and not knowing and knowing that nothing else is there. Okay. So, but. Look, there's an emptiness, but it's never seems to work. All that stuff we do, it never seems to work, man. It never seems to work. Young adults only think about today for the most part. You know, the generations we had today, you can't blame them. They ain't been taught nothing. They don't know nothing, you know. So what young adults do, they only think about today because to them, there really is no tomorrow. Half fun today. I heard a young boy said the other day, I'm living for today. I don't care about tomorrow. Why? Because he don't know any better. Nobody told him nothing. They all want it now. So if a woman wants to give herself her car, her money, her body, and her most valuable asset time to a man, huh, he's going to take it. Why? Because he's selfish. Not really on purpose, but this is how he was raised with no mission, no purpose, and no meaning in his life. So he's drawn to doing what his instincts tell him. And that's what? The seeking of complete and total pleasure in all things, which makes him soft, effeminate, and emasculated. A man is not a true man until he's married with kids and willing to suffer and die to himself, never considering his wants and desires. You, I, I, People get mad when I say this. What is the truth? You ain't a man, man, until you, you man up and get you a woman, you marry her, you have a family and raise them and lead them towards God, a different higher purpose. Because until then, man, you're just a person. You just, a, you just, you just Adam walking around trying to find your way. You don't really know where life really is about. Okay. I know dudes now that ain't married. They ain't married, ain't been married because they don't want to. They like being by themselves. That's called selfishness. No sacrifice. Then and only then will Almighty God give him the grace to start his search towards heaven. Until you get married, until you have children, until you say that I'm going to sacrifice myself and my life for my wife and my kids, then and only then will God start giving you the grace to go to the next level, which is be to him, be moved towards him. So what do you think? Send your questions or comments to radicalquestions at catholicalpha.com. Send your questions or comments to radicalquestions at catholicalpha.com. So is your marriage mediocre, lukewarm, or failing? Want to understand why? Take the 20-minute marriage makeover challenge. Chaos in your marriage and home? Huh. Watch video too, homie. Could your lack of leadership or authentic masculinity be the culprit? Hmm. Maybe. Watch video three. If your intimacy is at if your intimacy is average or non-existent, this is most likely the reason. Watch video four. Stop the feeling of helplessness. Get Catholic marriage help now. Register for the 20 minute marriage makeover at CatholicAlpha.com. Our final segment today is the Catholic Alpha Marriage Tactic. It's time for the Catholic Alpha Marriage Tactic, a series of marriage tactics that will transform you from zero to hero, but only if you drop the laziness 
aloofness and pride and actually do them. Consider, is your marriage passionless, lackluster, mediocre, or currently in the toilet? (laughs) Want to get it back on track? Make it great? Then consider today's alpha marriage tactic number two. Either listen to me now or I guarantee you, you'll be looking for me or someone like me later. So what is Catholic alpha marriage tactic number two? It is implement marriage maintenance now. Implement marriage maintenance now. Quote, there is the feeling of being hungry after having eaten or of being disgusted with food because it has nourished not the body. In the case of an individual or another body, in the case of marriage. In the woman, this sadness is due to the humiliation of realizing that where marriage is only sex, her role could be fulfilled by any other woman. There is nothing personal, incommunicable, and therefore nothing dignified. Summoned by her God-implanted nature to be ushered into the mysteries of life, which have their source in God, she is condemned to remain on the threshold as a tool or an instrument of pleasure alone and not as a companion of love. Two glasses that are empty cannot fill up one another. There must be a fountain of water outside the glasses in order that they may have communion with one another. It takes three to make love. End quote. Venerable Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen, three to get married. I have a question. So. Why do we only change when the pain is so unbearable that it almost forces us to our knees? I remember in my first marriage, my wife would leave me and get on the airplane, do and get home to her mom's and go home to her mom's house. I'm out working, trying to make some money. I'm thinking she's at home fixing dinner, getting the kids ready for bed and for school. I come home and everybody's gone. See, I didn't take the clues she was giving me. I didn't see the pain because, one, (laughs) I was just trying to make a living, man. I was trying to put food on the table. I was doing what I thought a man was supposed to do. And two, I wasn't really in tune with my wife, man. I really wasn't. Looking back, I probably didn't see the issues because I didn't want to face them. But see, that's a clear road to what? Divorce court. So what is marriage maintenance? Okay. I define marriage maintenance as not waiting until things in your marriage are dire, desperate, and in the toilet before trying to fix them. Not waiting too long before taking action when problems arise. Manning up and battling the issues before they start. And if a problem does come up, tackle it now. Is this how you roll in your marriage? What I just, the definition I just gave, marriage maintenance. See, when I was in the Air Force, man, I worked on airplanes, on bombers and tankers and fighters and stuff. And one thing that we always did, we didn't wait for something to break before we took care of it. We had all these manuals for maintenance on the plane. We keep it washed. We keep it tuned up. We keep it oiled. We keep it You know, we keep all we test, do all these tests to make sure the equipment is working right. So when the pilots in the air, man, are getting ready to take off, especially in the air, the stuff don't break on him. He's not going to crash into the sea because then it's too late. Right. So that's what gave me the idea about marriage maintenance is that, you know, you do things in marriage and your marriage to nip stuff in the bud. Now, you don't wait until your wife has her has her suitcase in her hand and the kids and one each arm and behind her trying, you know, running toward the car, trying to get away from your butt. You don't do that. You don't wait. Then. It's too late. Then she ain't coming back. <laughs> you know, 
Um, so if this is how you roll in your marriage, marriage maintenance, I applaud you. If you nip problems in the bud right now, I applaud you. But you know what, man? Most of us don't. The odds are you don't. You know why? Because the pain isn't kicking you in your butt yet. You still feel you can put it off. Your wife isn't crying or like me taking the kids and going out of state. Oh, then when they do leave <laughs> and get away from us, then we try to get on it and solve it in crisis mode. But of course, it's too late. She ain't listening and she don't care. If this is you currently, you have huge, huge problems, man. You, you, you just really do. And you don't even perceive the problems. Like I always say, women, they think 20 steps ahead of us, brother. <laughs> you thinking about, you know, you know, going to work for eight hours and she's thinking about if they don't get it right. How is he going? If you don't get this together, I'm out of here. And how can I do that? So if you have what you think are small issues, medium issues or worse, large chaotic issues, your wife has already been planning how she is going to deal with them and you. While you're out on the golf course, at work, or out with the fellas, she's planning what she's going to do if you don't get it together. And I said that. Please, fellas, listen to what I'm saying. Please listen to what I'm saying. She will act like things are great and okay because that's what women do. They don't want to hurt your feelings, but they'll give you clues all day long. That's because women are always trying to keep things together until what? Until we as men get it together. So what's the solution? The solution is you must be in tune with your beloved at all times. At all times, be in tune with your wife. You must notice the little things. Why? Because she does. You must put a plan in action that kills potential problems before they even start. This is marriage maintenance. I know you're saying, Jerry, this all sounds good, <laughs> but how do I do it? I mean, so here are some things that'll help. So four steps to help you implement marriage maintenance. Prayer. Number one is prayer. Prayer for the guidance and grace to get to confession and help you see problems before they arise. If you don't have a regular prayer life, man, <laughs> or don't pray at all, or only pray whenever you, you know, problems happen, this is your main problem. You aren't taking advantage of the supernatural world. I guarantee you there are there are serious, serious, serious problems in your marriage right now if you are not praying and battling for your marriage with God's help. And you don't even know it. And you're probably not even noticing it. But this podcast, I'm trying to get you to notice it to save your marriage and your family. OK, number two, start praying the rosary immediately. And I always say that nobody listens to me. But hey, it's your life, dude. You do what you want. You do what you think you got to do. You do what you big. Like my mama say, my mama day used to say, you do what you big and bad enough to do. You do what you think you big and bad enough to do. So if you don't want to pray the rosary and, and get the help of the Holy of the Blessed Mother um, and, and God. Hey, that's on you. This will begin molding you into a holy lover. If you pray the rosary, it will begin molding you into a holy lover, which is what? What is a holy lover? The man your wife needs, the man God created you to be. OK, ultimate husband, ultimate man. OK. Number three, begin ASAP anticipating potential problem areas. You can only do this if you observe your wife, <laughs> if you actually pay attention to her, if you're in tune with her, if you become her best friend. And people tell me all the time, I've even had, you know what? I'm thinking, I've never had a woman say being best friends with her husband isn't important. <laughs> I've never had a woman say that. But I have plenty of men say that. I ain't got to be her best friend to, to, uh, to, in order to be married to her. Yeah, dude, that's why your marriage is lackluster. That's why it's boring. <laughs> okay. This is why you must pray and ask for God's help and the Blessed Mother's help. God will send the Holy Spirit to guide you, and the Blessed Mother will, Mother will ask her son Christ to give you the strength of true man. It takes grace to be a real man, dude. Once you anticipate a problem, fix it now so it never even happens. If you have current issues, communicate with your wife immediately and ask her how you two can work together to solve them. 
Don't let your wife get upset and get all this stuff in her mind because the demons are influencing your wife just like they're influencing you. The more negative you think, the more you don't solve stuff, the more you don't man up, the more the, t- the more um, the more time and the more the demons influence your wife and you, your kids and the marriage. So you think it's just you. It ain't just you, man. There's demons all around you, man. The supernatural world is all around you. And you got your guardian angel right there, too. And I will admit, I forget to invoke my my guardian angel a lot. And I kick myself in the butt. I even write it down. I still forget. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. Because your guardian angel, man, it keeps the demons off your butt, man. If he guides you and do it, he implants things in your mind, thoughts to help you. Okay? Um, but you must remember you are here responsible for the success with God's help or failure. You've turned your marriage over to the evil one of your marriage. You as the man are responsible for the success and or the failure of your marriage. If you look at it like that and stop trying to blame your woman, you will do a lot better. Lastly, don't wait ever, 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 never wait. Tackle and solve issues now. Because if you don't, they will only build and get worse, causing more chaotic problems. And the last thing, number four, sign up for the 20 minute marriage makeover. Now, this will get you started and give you time. I mean, I'm going to give you some ideas. I mean, to um, and ideas and guidance on what you can do to begin fixing your marriage and putting and preventing chaos. The marriage, the 20 minute marriage makeover, man. Go to my site, CatholicGavel.com. There's a big button right there. Click on it. And it will go through the five videos, man. And it will give you some ideas. And it will it will stimulate some things that you might be doing wrong that can help save your marriage down the road. Um, next, the here are some benefits to working on on uh, marriage tactic number two, which is what I call marriage maintenance. Okay. First. You'll save your marriage, man. You'll save your marriage. I don't have to go no further on that. Right now, most of us think our marriage is good. If you think your marriage is good, it probably ain't. <laughs> if you walking around thinking your marriage is great, it probably ain't. You better talk to your wife. Better ask her. <laughs> Second, you will keep your family together under one roof. Your kids deserve a mother and father together under one roof. They do. Things go a lot better. If you and your wife are having problems, fix it, make it work, get it together. Okay? Start to love each other again. It ain't going to happen, though, unless you, the man, take the lead. Three, your wife will support you, aid you, and become the wife you need. See, you you complain about your wife. You complain about she ain't doing this. She ain't doing that. She ain't washing the dishes. She ain't she can't cook. She ain't cleaning. She ain't going. She ain't going to work 12, 14 hours a day. <laughs> she ain't she ain't controlling the kids. <laughs> she ain't doing nothing. You know, you complain about all the stuff she ain't doing. She ain't giving you sex how you want it. You know, you complain to her. <laughs> you complain what you you complain about her. But dude, you what are you doing? Fix yourself first, and then your wife will come. But you got to fix yourself, man. If you want the best wife in the world, man, it's it, it's, it's hard, but it's simple. The, the process is simple, man. You take care of her, she'll take care of you. You know, that's just the way it is. If you keep disappointing her, she's going to get tired of that road. <laughs> so what are the consequences of failing to follow the Alpha marriage tactic number two, implement marriage maintenance right now. First, your marriage will eventually become chaotic. It will happen slow, but it will come. If you got already got chaos in your marriage, it's only going to get worse. Just like the, just like the, just like, uh, the country, the the, the America, we think it's going to get better. Uh Uh-uh. It's going to get worse. It's only going to get worse. Okay. Get ready. Number two, you and your wife will, if not already, blame each other for problems in your marriage. This disrespect, untrustworthiness, and passing the blame will lead to, again, what is my saying? Divorce court. 
Ain't nothing like losing your wife, dude. I've been there. Ain't nothing like losing your kids and your family, dude. I've been there. I'm telling you, get it together, dog. I'm trying to help you a little bit. God's trying to help you. The Holy Spirit's trying to help you. Just listen. Stop sitting on your duff and do the, do the do it right. So, we'll lead you to divorce court. Or at minimum, you know, it might lead you to divorce court, but your marriage is going to be lackluster, passionless, and your marriage should be selfish. I promise. I promise you. This is one promise I can make. <laughs> your wife will be Eve on your butt. She will send you through hell if you don't get it together. Stop taking her for granted. Please, man. We lo I love you, man. That's why I'm trying to work with you. <laughs> get it together. Stop being aloof. Bam! Is your marriage mediocre, lukewarm, or failing? Want to understand why? Take the 20-minute marriage makeover challenge. Chaos in your marriage and home? Watch video two. Could your lack of leadership or authentic masculinity be the culprit? Watch video three. Is your intimacy average or non-existent? This is most likely the reason. Watch video four. Stop the feeling of helplessness. Get Catholic marriage help now. Sign up for the 20 minute marriage makeover at catholicalpha.com. And in conclusion, as we always do, we end with a quote from Pope Benedict the 16th. And it says, society offers you comfort. But you weren't made for comfort. You were made for greatness. So go forth, Christian soldier. The spiritual fight is upon you. Fast. Pray. And prepare for battle. Thank you, Christian soldier, for listening in today. Remember, Catholic Alpha Radical is designed to repair, ignite, and once again spark the fire back into your marriage or relationship. So, what's your next action step? One, share this podcast with someone needing help in their marriage or relationship. Two, rate this podcast if listening on iTunes. Three, subscribe to this podcast if listening on CatholicAlpha.com to get new episodes in your email now.